recommended by Laxim. Giving people a few minutes to get logged in. We're going to be rolling. Jonathan's here. talking about being 41 degrees where he is in Maine. It's 36 here, so spring is very confused, Jonathan. It is. Somebody said, I think as uh, David Crowder said, we need to reboot spring. Yes, I'm plugging, I'm plugging plug it, it back up. Plug it back in. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what good get it going. For sure. Hey, we got Johnny in the house today. What's up, Jonathan Short? What is up? I'm in the house. Jonathan's been writing. He, he wrote this. Look, 693. That's where we are today. It's uh, falling apart. It's coming. There's paper going. 693 programs. Yeah, Woo-hoo! we had, I was helping somebody a minute ago load a couch, and it was spitting snow here in Virginia. Cool. How's everybody doing today? There's Larry and Sid. I can't do it. It's too many people. Hey, Kim. I want to shout everybody out, but we don't got time. I love y'all. Thanks for your comments. Somebody's preaching about Job. Uh, it's good to have everybody on the show today, and uh, I can't believe I don't see Heather yet. <laughs> she always shows up when you hear. She, she might be actually doing something I want today. To show, I want to show y'all something. I'm, I'm drinking out of my Soul Nuggets cup. This is my Soul Nuggets cup. And on the back of it, Jonathan's wifey did this illustration. And this is from, let me just kind of do a shout out. Dun, 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 dun. Teresa Mullins' new book goes to church here called Soul Nuggets. And... Uh, let me find one of these illustrations because uh, she did some purdy ones, man. It's purdy. If you want to get this book, you can get it on Amazon. Or if you're around here, you can buy it off Teresa. It's a little, little bit better deal. There's one of the illustrations Jonathan's wife did. Look how artistic she is. I'm trying to turn it the right way. So. You see, you compare that to those little numbers. My little numbers don't look so good now. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we can try that. Where did it go? We can go, okay, this versus yeah. this. She's, okay, she wins. She's, she wins. <clears throat> this is a story about uh, Teresa and Donnie Joe, their life, and uh, some cool stuff. Get a copy. Soul Nuggets on Amazon. And uh, whoop, whoop. yeah, ba 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 Teresa Napier Mullins is actually here. Hi, guys. We're talking about you, Teresa. How did you know we were talking about you? Because you just popped in. She's the author. We'll have to get her on the show and converse about her book. Pretty cool. Have her on here and uh, and do a bit of conversation about it. So are we ready to sing, Johnny? Um, are you plugged in? Yes, I am. I'm coming. I don't hear your guitar. Well, because I unmuted it when you unplugged it. How about now? There we go. There it is. He's doing, 
go ahead. Yeah, we're going to sing Chain Breaker. I um, haven't had this song in my mind for a while, but I uh, uh, sang it down at the um, FCS, uh, Fellowship of Christian Students, at Union Middle School today. And uh, they like that song, so I don't know. It's kind of still in my heart, and maybe somebody needs to hear it today. I love this song. I, mean, I really do. I like it. We've kind of worn it out, but I don't care. I, still, I can just keep on singing it. It's cool. I got a new feature. Bring them on camera. I can bring somebody right on camera. We need to start doing that. Yeah, let's just be on this one. Ready or on, not, it wouldn't be on everything. Are you, guys, are you guys ready? Let's get <laughs> some reverb going, and then we're going. We're going to see. Here we go. Song. I never get tired of it. I really never do. And uh, we sung that a lot at church. How's everybody doing today? Good to see you on the show. Thank you so much, Doug. We got Maine in the house. Florida is here. I don't, I don't know if we got any foreign countries we normally do. I see new names. Hey, it's Bill Watson. What's up, Bill? And uh, Chris is here from Kentucky. That's like another country, isn't it? <laughs> oh, come on. That was just a joke. It was only a joke. I made a, I made a mistake of uh, just joking about Kentucky drivers on Facebook one time. Man. It didn't end well. It's people, just a joke, man. People can't take them jokes. Now, there are plenty of Virginia jokes to be made. My I goodness, know I'm from all. West Virginia. Come on, let's talk no. about that anyway. Hey, uh, Larry said, Dodie said, uh, that Tar Heel can sing. 
Are you a hokey? They can play some ball, too. (laughs) (laughs) Good to see you guys on here today. Thanks for jumping in on the show. Welcome to the Vital Action. If you're new, we've been doing this for, Lord never have mercy, I don't know, what, three years? Four? I mean, like we said a minute ago, 693 shows. You could divide, take the weeks, and and, and I'll 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 do all that. It's been three years? Probably, I would say. I mean, we started out on on an iPad, and we graduated to this, and we hope to graduate a little bit further, but... um, uh, we've been talking this week about, <clears throat> there's a message I preached on on this past Sunday at church called High Octane, <clears throat> and it's a conversation about sin, actually, and uh, and so we we talked about how that if you if you allow things in your life that shouldn't be there, they can affect, and what we did was, the illustration was I took a gas can and started pouring water in it, and everybody started freaking out, no, no, don't do it, because they understood that water in your gas means you're going to be somewhere on the side of the road, shut down. And then I said, well, how come we're worried about water in the gas or sugar in our gas tank, but we're not worried about sin in our life? And there seems to be some kind of a belief in the church that sin doesn't really matter anymore. But that belief is not supported by the Word of God. Uh, I, I don't care if, if you've been born again and saved and you, and you walk with, with the Lord. If you walk away from the Lord, if you get involved in sin, it will have a terrible effect on your life. And uh, the consequences will be the same. See, Brian says they're wonderful meeting today. Jonathan, he was oh, down there at yeah. FCS. He yeah. said, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Brian, thank for the invitation. Jonathan. And so I concluded yesterday, <clears throat> so we were talking about, um, let, me, let me get to back, let me back up here and get a couple slides in that I want to remind us about. It says this, um, here's the deal. Do you want turmoil, defeat, and judgment in your life? Then maintain a casual attitude towards sin. And, uh, uh, oh, you lost a 56-year-old nephew today. I'm so sorry to hear that, Sandra. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Be praying for you guys. If you, if you want turmoil and defeat and judgment in your life, well, just maintain a casual attitude towards sin. But if you want victory and if you want to be an overcomer, then take sin seriously. I mean, you, you got you, sin has the power to destroy you. Old preacher said this. I've said it so many times. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, make you stay longer than you want to stay, and you end up paying more than you ever thought you'd pay. That's how it works. And I, I concluded the show yesterday saying to you that if anybody says they're a friend and they don't tell you the truth about sin, they're not a true friend. It's just not real. We, we should be able to tell each other, hey, stop it. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, Gary, hey, Kaner. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be acting like that. And here, here's where I want to get to today because a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't think it's bad. I don't feel bad when I do it. I don't, I, I, I mean, I don't feel no condemnation. I don't feel, I don't feel guilty or ashamed. I, so therefore, it must not be wrong. And, and here's my response. Just because you feel comfortable doing it, just because someone else has told you it's okay, even if you're participating in ignorance, sin will still ruin your life. It doesn't matter if you yeah. like it or it feels good or somebody said it's okay. Even if you're ignorant, can I say that? Yeah. Even if you're ignorant about it, if, if you are not aware that it's sin, it'll still destroy you. And I want to make sure I say, even if you are a believer who loves Jesus and you've given your life to him and you start allowing sin into your life, I'm promising, I'm giving you promises now, it'll still ruin your life. And we can't, I don't understand the church doesn't talk about sin, Jonathan. What do you think that is? Yeah. Why don't we talk about sin anymore? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I think it's the very thing that's destroying our culture is the fact that we just don't want to bring any kind of confrontation uh, to our life. You know, talking about, um, you know, you, you can, I may or may not have been pulled over a few times in my life for uh, not doing the speed limit. <laughs> um, but you know what? Even if you're unaware that this, maybe you, there's a drop in the speed limit. You missed the sign. I missed the sign, or, hey, I didn't know that the speed limit changed here. The officer has never <laughs> been like, oh, well, it's okay. Yeah, I don't care. He always writes the ticket. And, uh, so Sir, we, maybe we, next time you'll know. We'll, we still have to pay for it, even if we're oblivious to the things. We better be aware of what's going on around us and our culture and what we're letting in our life. So what about if, well, okay, so what about if I say, well, but God will forgive me? If if you repent, yes, he will. But we have to be aware of what we need to repent of, and not constantly. Uh, what about the consequence? If God forgives me, the consequence is gone, right? No. Uh, Let's say I cheat on my wife. I cheat on my wife. I go find some other woman to run around with. But then I say, God, I'm so sorry. And then that woman gets on Facebook and tells the whole world there won't be any consequence, will there? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the reality of it is, even if you get forgiveness, I mean, forgiveness is, is a must. You, you've got to repent and get right with God. But listen, that doesn't mean the consequence is eliminated. Right. I've, I'll always use the same analogy. There are a lot of Christians in prison. 
who are there and they ask God to forgive them. But guess what? The consequence is still there in their life. We can't, we can't be casual about sinfulness. We cannot be casual. And when we, get, when we are casual about it, that's when it catches us. The Bible says Satan goes around as a roaring lion. This was written to the church, by the way. Seeking whom he may devour. Well, he's already got the world devoured. We're not, he's not talking about them. He's talking about Christians. Seeking whom he can pull down to bring out of the herd to, to destroy. He's looking for opportunities to rip you off. Yeah. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does that through lust and temptation, which leads to sin, which leads to death. We read it in James yesterday. And we got to be aware of that. Here's what our challenge is. It's very simple. It's, our, it's, it's, it's in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22. Stay away from every kind of evil. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. That's that's the bottom. I was watching. Uh, do, do you let your dog lick you in the mouth? Ooh, no. I, I never understand people no. kissing their dogs. You, no. you ever understand that? No. And I'm, I'm 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 going down through Facebook trying to get out of bed this morning, and there's somebody with a big <laughs> thing, big thing sticking out of their lip. It was nasty. Why do people put this stuff on Facebook? I don't know. And it no. said, "Here's the reason you never let your dog lick you in the mouth." <laughs> and I was like, grotesque. It's very grotesque. <laughs> and uh, and so. Uh, I want to say, sin is that way. I mean, stay away from all of it. I, I love dogs. I love them. I will not be kissing any of them. I'm not. I mean, I love them. I can hold them and get their little hair all over my clothes and take forever to get it off. But I love dogs. I'm getting ready to go see my son today down in North Carolina. And, hey, uh, Adia's on. You just added me up. Hey, Adia. And, uh, and so I'll throw the ball for that dog for hours, but I am not kissing him because I don't want the germ. I don't want that. And so so many Christians, they just kiss up to sin. And guess what? It gets in their life, and they're ruined. So uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22, stay away from every kind of evil. Stay away. Run. Flee. The, the Bible says flee. Flee fornication. This requires a clear understanding, as Jonathan said this, what is sin and what is it? We might better go investigate that. You, uh, you should know. You have the Word. It'll tell you. And it's more than the Ten Commandments. And it's more than just, you know, Paul goes in and gives all these great details about things you shouldn't be doing anymore. We must be aware of sin and its destructive power. And we're told to flee from sin. Here's some things we're told to flee from. I'll just give you an example. Uh, flee, uh, flee fornication. Flee, flee youthful lust. Flee idolatry. Flee evil. People say, well, we're not idolaters in America. Oh, we're better than the rest. And, and I want you to think about that. Flee, 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 flee. Uh, we have two simple options. Embrace sin or reject sin. That's our, that's our option. You can embrace it or reject it. And, and I, I feel like, and Jonathan, you can tell me what you think. I feel like there are two kinds of, two types of Christians. Number one is a Christian who says, I'm saved, but they still dabble in sin all the time, and, but I'm going to get forgiveness. And they're always running to God. Please, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Then there's other kind of Christian who says, man, I'm saved, and I want to be what God wants me to be. I want to live holy and walk in righteousness, and so I'm going to avoid those things. There's a difference between tripping and making a mistake and deliberately just saying, hey, who cares? God will forgive me. And I think as Christians, we've got to, we always need to repent. You know, I always search, and the Lord search my heart for but I think our life is the most blessed and most joy into our life when there are fewer reasons to repent of in our life. No kidding. And then, then all the junk that getting Comes involved with it. in your life. Right. The drama. I hate drama. Actually, I created a page years ago called No Drama. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Facebook, it's still up. No Drama Day. So I was going through deleting a bunch of pictures out of my uh, stuff out of my uh, computer because the memory was full. And there's all those No Drama Day uh, mm -hmm. memes, or somebody calls them memes. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> Tons of them. You can go look. Go on Facebook and look up No Drama Day. It's hilarious. And uh, and so I want you to think about that. We got two choices: to embrace sin or reject sin. To embrace holiness or reject holiness. And, and, and the path to each decision is very, very clear. Let me read to you now. I want to conclude. I just got a few minutes left today. By the way, won't be here tomorrow. I got a little kid turning, just turned one year old this week, and oh, we're having a party so in Harrisburg, North Carolina. I'll be back for Sunday, and um, we're coming back Saturday evening. So pray for us as we journey to the great state of North Carolina. Yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. You might decide you like it. Just want so much I, I love it. I used, to, <laughs> I used to live in Charlotte. I lived in Charlotte. But listen, I want to conclude this week uh, talking uh, out of Romans chapter 6, ele verse 11, and a few verses here. Here's Henry Ishii from Dubai. He's in the house today. Hey, Floyd. Uh, so let's look at this, or Nancy, or Floyd and Nancy, whoever's there. Romans six eleven. So you also should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin. Consider. That's a decision, by the way. And alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not allow or let. Can I say that's a permission statement? Do not let sin... Control the way you live. That's a permission. Will you let sin control the way you live or God control the way you live? Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in 
to sinful desires, which means you have them. James said, every man sins when he's led away of his own evil desires. That's why we got to be crucified and let God move in our life. So do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Verse 13 says this, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God for you were, you were dead, but now you are alive. So use your whole body as an instrument to do uh, what is right for the glory of God. Sin, no longer, sin is no longer your master, uh, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace, slaves to righteousness. Verse 15, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can just go on sinning? And Paul says, of course not. Verse 16, don't you realize that you become the slave? Now, this is to Christians. This is to the Roman church, the Roman Christians in Rome. Don't, don't you realize that you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey? Christians can do that. You can become a slave to sin. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. That's what's going to happen if, if you let it happen. Or you can choose to obey God, choose to obey God, choose, choose, choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Verse 17, about to wrap it up. Verse 17, thank God once you were slaves to sin, but now you are wholeheartedly obey the, uh, obeying the teaching uh, which we have given you. So here's the reality. Here's the reality. God has said, you know what? Here's the law and all these things. But if you walk with Christ, it doesn't apply to you anymore because you're not sinning. That's the whole point. It's not that the law becomes powerless. It's that it's not relevant anymore. It's not relevant because if I'm not involved in sin, in the sin nature, if I'm obeying Christ and walking with Christ. Hey, Jacqueline, what's up? Jacqueline is blessed, it says. Uh, and uh, welcome. She's on Periscope by some of you guys on YouTube or Facebook. I don't see that person. Well, there, we got four different locations we're on here. So, so think about this. So if you walk with God, the law, the law doesn't really apply. For example, here's an example. If you're going down the highway, this is what I do. I set my cruise. And therefore, the law doesn't apply to me because I'm not speeding. So therefore, that cop Jonathan's talking about is not going to pull me over because I'm not breaking the speed limit. I've got my crew set, and I'm, I'm, on, I'm just I'm abiding by the law. As we walk with God and walk in obedience, the law doesn't really apply. But if we start to walk in sin, suddenly the law becomes a reality again in our life, and then there's the judgment of God that comes, and we get ourselves in all kinds of trouble. It's all, I know it's hard not to live close to your grandbabies. Well, that's kind of it for us today. We are done, and I, remember, I won't be here tomorrow for those of you that will just cry your eyes out, and they'll probably probably have to you know, go get in the bed and pull the covers over their head. Oh, yeah. Probably probably nobody will even. Function. You'll, you'll probably be like a, a general depression over the United States because I won't be, be on the show tomorrow. But um, anyway, guys, good to see you on. New people, good to see you guys on too. Jonathan? Parting words. Parting. Peace out. Have a great weekend. Be blessed. And let's uh, – be careful what we let in our gas tank, right? Amen, amen. And uh, Thursday's always my favorite day. Tar Heels have heavy feet, he said. I don't, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get what you, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Heavy feet. Okay, kids, here comes the music, and I'm going to jam for a bit. Love you guys. Have a great, great day. That's you done you. Adios. Au revoir. God be with you. All those wonderful things we say. Spokona Noichi. Have a great day.